I'd like to say hello to everybody, especially to my colleagues from Andrasha Hospice. <laughs> uh, it's a little pity, uh, I think, and I'm a little ashamed that uh, being your neighbor, I mean, coming from Poland, I'm speaking in English, but, well, it was just the idea that I should. <laughs> so, and it's very difficult for me, after such one wonderful uh, lecture, your lecture, I could pick up a lot of uh, Czech uh, emotions. I have some, a little bit boring, I'm sorry, information about the program we uh, established some years ago, but I'm, I, I promise I will try to do some examples. Um, this is just the building that only offices because we are home care service in Warsaw. We started in, uh, well, in 1994, so it's 22 years ago. Uh, the building uh, shows uh, two branches of our activity, home care, I mean, over there, and USG clinic, which is the background for uh, perinatal hospice. Uh, this is just the um, definition which was created by uh, Tomasz Dangel, who is uh, my boss. <laughs> but it's not the only one reason <laughs> why I put it here. But I think that it's quite um, completed uh, and full of information uh, uh, definition. Uh, I, I will not... Oh, well, I should read because you, you have translation, okay. Uh, perinatal palliative care is ensuring comprehensive support for the parents of fetuses, for me, children, but I know that's uh, medical language, and newborns with lethal defects and care for newborns with these defects aimed at ensuring comfort and protection from persistent therapy. It uh, encompasses symptom control in the child and psychological, social, and spiritual support for the parents, including support during bereavement. The child can be cared for in a neonatal ward or at home by the parents and hospice if the child survives delivery and is discharged from the hospital. This is just the, uh, the, 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 the definition, but I think that it's based of, uh, on the definition of lethal uh, di uh, defect. I think that it's very Polish, uh, and I'll explain why. Because it's a developmental anomaly that leads to spontaneous abortion, immature delivery on intrauterine death. It's a developmental anomaly leading to the premature death of a live-born child, irrespective of any therapy that may be applied, and developmental anomaly classified as grounds for legal abortion. And this is just the, the, the last point is very Polish because of Polish law. So it means that um, legal abortion ca can be done for children with other anomalies, not lethal, like uh, Down syndrome on some heart defects, which can be cured, but the risk of treatment is very high. So it's not, uh, by definition, not lethal, but possible to, to do uh, uh, abortion. What is in our uh, ideas and the way we are working perinatal hospice? First of all, it's kind of alternative for abortion, because I know that in, I think, the world wild, uh, uh, I don't know, ideas, Poland is extremely Catholic country, that it's not, uh, I don't know, social uh, agreement for abortion, that's not true. <laughs> of course, there are a lot of Catholic uh, people, but there's a lot of abortion doing in, uh, in our country. So that, that was uh, the reason why a lot of, uh, I don't know, noise made in parliament in, in, and in country when the government wanted to change some, some, some law connected with that. But there are a lot of people who are not uh, basing on uh, any religious uh, background or ideas. They, they want to carry on with pregnancy, even if there is a lethal uh, defect because of some, some reasons, and I think that I will have some time to, to tell more. We, we are trying to support parents because uh, after diagnosis, it's horrible chaos and emotional turmoil. A lot of parents of, of the new, newly diagnosed children is, uh, are, was saying to us that uh, it was just like falling into a black hole. The word stopped exists. You don't know what to do. You don't know what's going on. 
and you're trying to find something to 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 carry to to to, to grab in your hand and to to go up little by by little and we are just kind of i don't know hook <laughs> uh, you you can take and we are trying to uh, to support them as much as possible uh, this is very uncertain time and it's very uncertain diagnosis because even if there is a little diagnosis like edwards syndrome you never know how long child can survive if he or she can uh, live till delivery time you, you never know so it's very frustrating and very stressful time and it's uh, full of st very strong um, emotions what what are the tasks for us we need to discuss with the parents what they really want to do because we are not saying that uh, i don't know intensive care unit is forbidden no it's not our idea it's just like you said that Respect is the main tool and the main word in our work. So we need to listen to the parents what they want for the baby and what, what they want for, for them as a family too. Because as you know, when we are uh, working um, uh, in um, home, un home units, there are not only a sick child. There are parents, siblings, grandparents, and there's all uh, system, family system, which is very, very important to have a look at that. Um, then, uh, fortunately, because we are working for many years, we have a very, you know, shortcut to hospitals. And we cooperate with, uh, with uh, two or three hospitals. And uh, we know that there are doctors who can um, take care of the uh, pregnant uh, women and who can take care of, uh, of the newborn child. So we are trying to contact them, I mean parents with the doctors in hospitals because they need to go for the delivery to the hospital and they discuss what they want for the baby. And uh, many years ago, one family, I think it was one of the first uh, parents we taking care of, um, they found on, of course, in the internet, a letter uh, which is... Uh, which was written by um, uh, by American couple, and they did the same in Poland. And it was a very surprising and shocking situation for the doctors in hospital because they went to the hospital with the letter full of information like that. Uh, first of all, they they uh, they put that they know that their daughter uh, has lethal condition, and because of that, they don't want any intervention. They want to let her live as long as she is able to live. And they put that they want um, to have the opportunity to, to, to hold her in their hands, to be together, because it was the first delivery, so a, a lot of stress uh, in spite of, of this whole uh, situ medical situation. Uh, and they, uh, that if she, uh, she will be strong enough, they would like to go home. And uh, the letter uh, went uh, from the doctor to the director of the hospital because they, they didn't know what to do. But it was the first stone which uh, pushes, I think, the avalanche. And now it is very easy way because um, the doctors in hospitals, they respect what the parents Want. So now it's, it's really easy. Sometimes newly diagnosed parents want to be in touch with other parents uh, whose children had the same uh, disease. So we have a list of them so we can contact uh, them. How we, how we work? First of all, we have consultant in perinatology and perinatal cardiology. Uh, and uh, she is doing uh, the diagnosis. And now we are working in such uh, rhythm that the days when she is uh, in our clinic, it's always psychologists with her. So if, if we have newly diagnosed parents, 
uh, we start uh, with medical diagnosis. Of course, this is some tests. Then the parents are invited to the consultant's office and we assist them. Of course, we are asking if it's possible or not, but 99.9% .9 agrees that the psychology is during medical, uh, giving medical information. And then after that, the doctor is leaving the room and we are staying with the parents. And of course, you can imagine that when the doctor is in the room, everybody is very quiet, <laughs> smart, no emotions. But uh, when the doors are closing, oof, there's <laughs> a lot of a, a lot of emotion, a lot of tears. Uh, sometimes it's silent, and uh, silent is terrifying me <laughs> because I think it's the oh, very, very difficult uh, situation. And sometimes it. It takes, I don't know, five, ten minutes, silent, and then we start to talk. Because sometimes they need to make one decision, if they want any other test or not. And this is just the day. So that's the reason why uh, I can't leave them for, for very, very long time, because they need to decide if they want, I don't know, amniopunction or this all stuff. So they, they need to make the decision. And this is just a situation I don't like very much <laughs> because we need to push them, uh, I mean, to, 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 to decide. But if it's uh, after this all uh, m medical things, this is just that I hope that the space and time, because there is not limited time for them to, to discuss. Sometimes it's very helpful because after time with us, I mean, with the psychologists, uh, we invite again the doctor, and sometimes they have more questions. After you know the first shock, they start to, to think and to ask the questions. Sometimes I can't answer because I'm not a doctor, I'm just a psychologist. Uh, we cooperate with uh, obstetricians, neonatologists, and of course palliative care specialists because we work together, so there is no problem with calling the doctor. I mean a palliative care specialist. Um, in March 2012, we, it was the first uh, agreement with a huge hospital in, in Warsaw, and we are doing uh, psychological consultation for, for the parents whose children were diagnosed, and uh, they can do legal abortion. So we, we are saying that this is another part of uh, our work. It's just the numbers of the psychological consultation we've done. This is to, uh, um, yes, we started with, uh, well, actually we started in 2002, but it was just two or three uh, consultation during the year, so I didn't put. 2009 is an uh, important year because it was uh, the beginning of, of our hospice, perinatal hospice, and the numbers of, of consultation, you can imagine, they grow. So there's a lot of work. And uh, in these years, we, I mean, uh, between 2009 and 2016, we had uh, over 1,000 consultations, and uh, near 100, uh, 600 were before 24 uh, um, weeks of pregnancy, because this is just the, the limit. After 24 weeks of pregnancy, you can't do abortion in Poland at all. Till that time, actually, that the obstetrician says that it's 22nd week, uh, but but in in law is still 24. You can't do anything with the, with the baby, and um, almost 400 um, people decided to continue the, the pregnancy. This is just our first patient after um, perinatal diagnosis, Violetta. Uh, who lived short, but uh, but at home. She was at home and she died peacefully. So uh, there was just uh, the, the very beginning of, of our work. Um, the parents weren't, uh, they didn't have any uh, psychological consultation. We started later on. And since that time we had uh, 46 uh, perinatally diagnosed children, and this is was it was the reason why we established perinatal hospice, because we noticed that we have more and more uh, newborns, uh, children with uh, different uh, diagnoses like um, 
Edward system uh, syndrome, Pateau syndrome, and other um, other malformation and defects. And we started to think that the help for the parents is needed during the pregnancy, sometimes more than after that. And uh, well, the patient's emotions, I had to put that because I'm a psychologist, so <laughs> I, uh, this is a little bit boring talking about all this task. But what is my task is, first of all, to, to support the parents after diagnosis. Uh, second thing is to be a little, to do a little psychoeducations. I'm calling that that way because sometimes they really don't know what is, I don't know, Edward's syndromes, and they're asking, have you ever seen a child with such syndrome? And I can proudly say, yes, I'm working with such children because I'm working in home care. So, so I can uh, give some information, I think, which uh, are not uh, um, easy to find in, uh, even in internet, especially for those who are not uh, um, using English. Uh, some, some articles on our website and very often parents said, oh, I know your website very, very well, so could you give me the telephone number to mother of Maya or any other children? Uh, so another thing is that uh, we need to go with them through, through the anger because I think that it's impossible not to be furious, rage or angry when you listen to the medical information that your child um, has any lethal uh, defects. And very often the anger is uh, showing during psychological consultation, not medical consultation. And it can be very difficult uh, to, to carry <laughs> such emotions, so um, any supervision is really <laughs> necessary and support for the, for the psychologists. But I think that for the parents, it's very, very important and we respect the anger and we say, okay, it's normal, it's natural. You can feel that and it's nothing wrong. Uh, at least you are not beating anybody <laughs> around you. Another thing is guilt. And guilt is very powerful uh, emotions because a lot of parents think that they had done something wrong and this is the, the reason why they heard such uh, diagnosis. And I'm really uh, still surprised and it's very difficult to forget uh, my meeting with young couple, well educated. You know, we are working in Warsaw, it's the capital of, uh, of European country, and 20, maybe four-year-old girl started to say that th she thinks the, um, the disease of the fetus or of her, her baby is because this is just kind of curse being in the family. And uh, it was almost at the end of our discussion, and she was pushed by her husband who said, please tell psychologists what you are thinking of. And of course, this, this vision of curse was supported by the lady's aunt who lost two sons. It was very, very difficult. So we started to a little bit to talk about what is kind of thinking connected with this curse, how it helps her to survive or not, and what to do with that. And another thing was that she said that, um, you know, when I um, get information and I felt that I'm pregnant, I, I wasn't happy. So maybe that's the reason why the child is ill. So it was another idea. So because I'm working uh, rather uh, in a cognitive behavioral way of uh, psychotherapy, so we started to talk about how joyful and full of joy uh, a lady should be to protect the child you know, before disease, because it was the only one way I, I started to think that I can help somehow uh, the lady. But there are such magic, uh, such uh, strange magical thinking appears in uh, parents' heads, it's in, 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 uh, incredible. And I really 
sometimes uh, I said that it's good that I'm sitting on the chair because probably I will fall down listening to such ideas and the reasons why the child has Edwards syndrome, for example. Sometimes uh, they, they think that uh, this is just because they did something wrong. This is just the punishment of, I don't know, God, nature, or anything else. And it's very difficult when uh, a lady did abortion before. And there's another difficult situation. This is the easiest way to connect. And it's a very difficult way to disconnect that, really, really, because they said, of course, I know, logical way, and, but emotions are very, very strong. Sometimes they feel shame, because especially if they are very young and all their friends has young children, they, f they, they don't want to talk about that. They, they close themselves. They don't want to uh, meet friends, go, I don't know, for the parties or just go outside because they think that everybody knows that they have something wrong in the, I don't know, uh, uh, in, uh, w with their baby. So, uh, so there are a lot, of, a lot of shame. And with the shame, I think that it's connected lower self-esteem because for them, as well for the mothers and for the fathers, this is just the sign that they are not 100% female or male because they couldn't create a healthy child. And especially for, for young couples, uh, when it's the first child, it's very difficult because if, if it's the second, third child, it's easier because they manage <laughs> yeah, they, they, they created healthy children. This is just kind of mistake, but when it's the first child, it's really, really difficult. And sometimes it connects with a little bit depression. So we have to be very, very careful when we start to talk with and to work with such um, parents. Sometimes, as I mentioned, they withdraw and with any social uh, relationship. Sometimes they don't want to, to talk to relatives. But what we are trying to do is to show that they don't need to explain every detail, but sharing such information means that you can get some support which could be very, very helpful and necessary during the pregnancy, especially when we meet someone uh, in 16 weeks of pregnancy. There's a lot of months uh, ahead, so they need to have some support and I think the psychologists shouldn't be the only one supportive uh, person in um, in social network. Sometimes they are trying to distance from unborn baby, and um, because they a uh, few mothers told me that uh, it was very difficult to them after diagnosis to touch the belly, to talk to the child. Sometimes even to use uh, the name of the child, because very often uh, people uh, choose their names very, very uh, early during pregnancy. So they said that it was kind of mechanism that they wanted to protect themselves. That one lady said that, I thought that if I stop love my child, I will not suffer as much as I imagined that, uh, that I would. But it didn't work <laughs> that way. But sometimes uh, I think that it's necessary to survive. That kind of distance is necessary to go to, ter to, go to the terms with all the, the thoughts and emotions after diagnosis. Uh, because I think that there is no other way. Sometimes stepping, uh, I don't know, backward helps to see the whole situation. And I think that sometimes it helps to accept the child because acceptance is not one second uh, process. It's long-term uh, process. And sometimes they have ups and downs. And my way of being psychoeducator is just to explain them that sometimes they can forget about the child and it's okay. Sometimes they can cry because of the child and it's okay. What is the most important that they should live? <laughs> that they should live as full as possible in such situation and they can't forget about the others around uh, them. And I think that uh, we are going to, to the end and uh, uh, it's the picture of not uh, um, perinatal diagnosis uh, 
girl, but she, um, she suffered from Edward syndrome and she died when she was 16. And I love this picture. <laughs> so that's the reason why it's Kasia laying down. And what is very important, why is Kasia here? Because uh, I was talking to her mother, because it was 16 years of care. Uh, and I ask one question, do you think that your child suffered? And uh, she said that, yes, there were the times when Kasia suffered. But I can't say that it was the whole life of suffering. And this, uh, these words are very helpful for me. And I think that uh, for the parents too, because their idea is that the child is suffering, suffering continuously, which is not true, and I think that we know that we can protect the child from, from suffering. But coming to the, the slide, it's um, when the child survives the delivery and the neonatologists decide that uh, it can go home. So there's just um, the admission to the hospice and then home care, and we now have two groups for bereaved parents. For we, we call it perinatal uh, group, so for those who lost the child be, before the date of delivery, and uh, another group for the bereaved parents um, whose children live longer. And we have uh, small leaflets with uh, the telephone numbers because the, um, the consulta psychological consultations are free. The parents don't need to pay. Uh, the, our foundation is covering uh, that, and there are telephone numbers for for the parents. So, so there's just the information that if if you don't know what to do and you are facing the diagnosis of some lethal defects or other um, disease, your um, unborn. Uh, 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 um, sorry. I, st I tried to, <laughs> to translate it from Polish into English and I stuck. So this is just information for the parents who want to talk to the psychologist during the emotional situation when the child is diagnosed with some lethal disease. So, so they, they can do, and uh, the idea is that we have uh, 24 hours for, for meeting the parents except weekends because it's just time for free. And I think that that's all. Thank you very much for your attention.